Good evening, I'm Lisa Aquafreda and welcome to Scottsdale 151. Our guest tonight is Douglas Lynch, a Valley Police Officer, and he will talk to us tonight about a very unique form of verbal judo. Welcome so much. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I appreciate it. So let's get down right to it. What is verbal judo? What's, what is it all about? Verbal judo is a set of verbalization skills, mm -hmm. um, and it's the gentle art of persuasion. It's, it's using language to try and influence the behavior of others, to ask them to go with the program instead of forcing them to. Um, as police officers, we'd rather be able to talk to someone and have them comply with our orders than have to physically make them comply with them. And how did it come about? It's kind of an interesting backstory. Um, verbal judo was started by Dr. George Thompson, who was actually an English professor who got bored, so he decided to become a reserve <laughs> police officer. He had so much fun, he never went back to, back to being a professor again. What he found out was when he was a rookie police officer, and he's traveling with what we call the old dogs of police work, is that they had this marvelous talent for being able to talk people who were in crisis and out of control, being able to talk them down and be able to get them to do whatever needed to be done to keep them safe. And Dr. Thompson was fascinated by this, so he'd ask these officers, well, how do you do this? And they go, well, y you just do it, you'll learn it. And, and he goes, well, well, how do you learn it? Well, you just learn it over time. But that's a problem because learning over time can be painful for both us and for anyone else, the citizens. So Dr. Thompson said, you know what, I'm gonna turn this into a system. And he started taking notes and he developed a methodology that we're teaching to this day to officers, and not just officers, we teach students, we teach teachers, HR personnel, military personnel, they're all finding use for it. So Officer Lynch, how do you do that? How do you diffuse that potentially violent situation? Well, by holding to what we call the five universal truths. Dr. Thompson came up with these uh, a couple of years back. He realized that there's over 100 cultures in the United States, probably closer to 200, mm -hmm. and that you can't know the ins and outs of every one of these cultures that you have to have a few basic rules that if you stick to, you'll succeed. The first one being, treat everyone with dignity and respect. If you do that alone, you're gonna succeed in more encounters than you're not. Secondly, if you just simply ask people instead of telling them what to do, you're gonna, again, get, generate that voluntary compliance. People are gonna be more inclined to do what you ask them to do instead of what you have to force them to do. Third of all, and this is a great American question, we all wanna know why. So if you simply explain to them why you're doing something, that's going to help. One of the last ones, too, is we like to give people options instead of threats. I don't know if you've got kids. I do. I can tell you if I tell them, do the dishes or else, we're going to or else. Okay? If I give them options, you know, do the dishes or you're not going to be able to stay up late watching TV, whatever, that they're more likely to go with the program. And lastly, and it's a human thing, is everybody wants a second chance. So if it's possible, we try and grant people a second chance. Those principles the entire program is based on. So if you just stick with those, even just those five things, you're going to succeed. Does it come from the inflection in your voice or just how you simply word things differently? Well, I'm glad you asked that. It's actually all of it. Um, we, we, we have what uh, Jill Weisenzell from Marquette University uh, coined the phrase, precision of word choice. You got to be very careful with your word choice, but more importantly, as you see as we're sitting here, yeah. um, you know, the face, the tone, the inflection, um, the tempo of your voice, all that goes into creating a cooperative environment instead of a hostile environment. I'm sure in your line of work, this is a situation that you've dealt with previously. Do you have any experiences to share? Yes, many. And actually what I'll share is one from my own personal life. Um, this morning, actually, I was going through my bake statements and realize now I have it set up so that my checking and my savings account are connected. Well, so if I run out of money in my checking because I'm not that good at balancing a checkbook, it just automatically <laughs> moves over from my savings. Well, this morning I looked at my account, I had done that, and they charged me several overdraft fees. I called the bank, obviously I was a little upset, but right away I wanted to use my verbal judo skills, so instead of using natural language and telling the young lady who answered the phone exactly how frustrated I was with the bank, I decided to try and use the five universal truths we just described and, and foster a cooperative environment. And what ended up happening is she admitted the bank had made a mistake, they refunded my fees, and actually everything worked out wonderfully. I can't say how it would have ended up if I would have got on the phone very angrily. So we use it in, very, in police work every day. But what's neat about it is you can apply it elsewhere. It really sounds like something that you almost could use every day of your life in different aspects. 
Absolutely, we encourage it um, because if you're communicating well at home, at work, at play, whatever, you're going to have less stress, you're going to communicate more effectively, and you're just going to have a better life. And just quick final question for you, can others be trained to use it? Absolutely. We say we can train anybody. As long as they have a willingness and a desire to learn, we can train them. We can make it so that they have better success in communication. Is there um, any other skills or anything else that you would like to add? Just a willingness to learn. If they come to us with a willingness to learn, we can train them. Cool. We really appreciate you taking the time. And um, right before we leave, is there any um, demonstration that you would like to share with us or show us? Well, you know what? For a demonstration, why don't we have a homework exercise? Here's what I'd like you to do and everybody else to do who may be watching this show. Mm -hmm. Two words. If you use them, I guarantee you tomorrow you will have success. Now, actually, it's a choice of two words, so you've got to kind of look at what's going around and decide which words. Those words are either good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. If you simply use those words when you're walking past people, when you stop in the gas station to pay the clerk, whatever, you will see how much more success you will have in communication. You'll see folks literally light up because somebody took the time just to say those two simple words to them. I encourage you to try it. So it's really just about acknowledging people and kind of making, making a presence. Showing them by your presence and your actions that you're treating them with dignity and respect. And if people are interested, where can they learn more? Um, they can go to verbaldefenseandinfluence.com. I know that's a lot, but verbal defense and influence all squished together. Com. Well, we definitely we really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much. So I want to thank our guest, Douglas Lynch, and we've learned a lot about verbal judo and verbal defense. This has been Scottsdale 151. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Interesting. I think it's interesting just to be able to...